Hello, dear students. As you all know that, according to the CBME, that is Competency-Based Medical Education, there are certain changes in the theory examination as well as in the practical examination. And there is a one change in the theory examination is that a case has been given to you, and there are certain questions related to that case. Obviously, pharmacology questions that are asked along with that and these case based questions you have to answer this question and uh, it is uh, somewhat challenging to answer and the reason is that such type of answers they are not ready made given in your uh, any of the textbooks or reference books okay uh, if you have learned the topic thoroughly uh, if you have learned the applied aspect of that topic and then and then you can uh, give the proper answer of that question and so I have decided that uh, we will discuss uh, each case and the answer of that case uh, at least once or twice in a week and uh, with this intention today I am going to discuss the first quiz and that is the case that has been already asked in the practical examination, preliminary, uh, sorry, preliminary theory examination of GMERS Medical College, Gandhinagar this year. Okay. So the case is a 50 years old male presented with gradual onset complaints of double vision, drooping eyelids, difficulty in chewing food and weakness of limbs which are accentuated by exercise and these symptoms are going to fluctuate in intensity over time and patient was diagnosed as having myasthenia gravis. So it is a case scenario of a patient having myasthenia gravis. Here our aim is not to ask you the diagnosis. Okay, so obviously in the pharmacology we will give you the diagnosis because that is, that will be uh, evaluated in the medicine and other clinical subjects. And now here the questions are enumerate the drugs used for this condition along with their pharmacological basis and how to differentiate the myasthenic crisis from the cholinergic crisis which can be occurred during the treatment of this disease. And you have to justify this answer and marks have also been shown in the bracket. So now the first question, drugs used for the myasthenia gravis. Now myasthenia gravis is the autoimmune disorder and here there are antibodies developed against the nicotinic receptor and that's why the receptors are not there. Receptors are not there and that's why if the receptors are not there, acetylcholine is not able to bind with the receptor and produces its subsequent function. That is the contraction of the muscle and that's why there is a muscular weakness. And it's a, uh, this disease is progressive in nature and a time will come then even the respiratory muscles, they become weak and ultimately there is a no treatment and there is a uh, resulting into the morbidity and mortality. Okay, now which drugs can be used? First drug group is the reversible cholinesterase inhibitors, then corticosteroids because of their immunosuppressant action and obviously the immunosuppressant agents. Now which reversible cholinesterase inhibitors? You all must know that cholinesterase inhibitors are divided into the two types, reversible and irreversible. Irreversible are these are the organophosphate compounds which are uh, actually not having any therapeutic value and the reversible cholinesterase inhibitors these are uh, natural and synthetic natural is the pyridostigmine and the synthetic is the neostigmine and uh, pyridostigmine sorry natural is the physostigmine and synthetic is the neostigmine and pyridostigmine okay and in the corticosteroids, prednisolone and various other compounds and immunosuppressants, azathioprine and cyclosporine. Now, the next question is, why these compounds are used or in the another sense, what is the pharmacological basis for using these agents? 
First of all, the reversible cholinesterase inhibitors. As the name suggests, they inhibit the cholinesterase enzyme, and that's why the destruction of the acetylcholine is prevented, and that's why the increased amount of the acetylcholine level will be there. So, whatever the number of the receptors are there, whatever number of the receptors are there, they can be utilized fully. The purpose of the using uh, cholinesterase inhibitors is these only. They have nothing to do with the nicotinic receptor, which is actually the main problem. And that's why even if you are using the cholinesterase inhibitor, the time will come when the nicotinic receptors are not there and then these drugs are not at all effective also. But we just come back to our original point, what is the pharmacological basis? So, increased acetylcholine level. Second, it also increases the release of the acetylcholine with the each nerve impulse and neostigmine. Neostigmine, it can directly stimulate the cholinoreceptor also. Okay, the second and the third action, the increased release of the acetylcholine with each nerve impulse and the direct stimulation of the cholinoreceptor, it is seen especially with the neostigmine. Neo, there is an another option of the neostigmine that is pyridostigmine. Uh, this question can also be asked that what is the difference or uh, which agent is better. Now, neostigmine is having a relatively shorter duration of action. So, more on-off type of action can be seen which can be overcome with the help of the pyridostigmine. But with the neostigmine, there is some added advantage also. So, there is a no big difference between these two. But as I have told you, the number of the acetylcholine receptor is not going to increase and at a time will come that these agents are not also not going to be helpful and at that time one has to go for the corticosteroids and the immunosuppressants. Now the corticosteroids, you must know the two actions of the corticosteroids, the immunosuppressant action and the anti-inflammatory action. Here in this case the immunosuppressant action is going to be helpful and the corticosteroids helps by inhibiting the production of the antibodies to the nicotinic receptor. But at the same time we cannot use corticosteroids for a long period of the time because you all know that the long term use of the corticosteroids they are having their own disadvantages. Okay, but it can be definitely used to tide over the crisis for uh, some time and a time when the cholinesterase inhibitors are also not helpful. Alternatively, one can use when the reversible cholinesterase inhibitors are not helpful. One can use the immunosuppressants like uh, this uh, cyclosporine and azathioprine. Azathioprine is having a relatively slow onset of action as compared to the cyclosporine and their function is same inhibition of the production of antibodies to nicotinic receptor by affecting the functions of T cells. So these are the pharmacological bases of each agent. Okay. So uh, this is the second part of the first question and the second question is how you can differentiate the myasthenic crisis from the cholinergic crisis? This is usually occurring in case of the treatment of a myasthenic patient. Now first you have to understand what are these two terminologies, myasthenic crisis and cholinergic crisis. Myasthenic crisis, we have told you the disease is gradually progressive in nature and a time will come when the respiratory muscles are also involved and this is known as a myasthenic crisis. And what is cholinergic crisis? As we are giving the cholin uh, reversible cholinesterase inhibitors in the treatment and uh, the disease is having a exacerbation and remission and if you have given the high amount of the reversible cholinesterase inhibitors, so what will happen? There is a more acetylcholine release and this acetylcholine uh, is uh, causing the, the muscle contraction with the help of the, the, by producing the depolarization, but the increased amount of the acetylcholine, it may lead to the persistent depolarization and this persistent depolarization, it will lead to the muscular weakness. Now, in both these cases, there is a muscular weakness. So, it is difficult for anyone to recognize that whether it is a myasthenic crisis, so it is the progression of the disease, the crisis because of the progression of the disease, or cholinergic crisis, crisis because of the drug treatment. Okay, so you can remember like this, the myasthenic crisis is due to the disease progression, cholinergic crisis is due to the drug treatment. Now, if the symptoms are same, how you can differentiate? Because in the myasthenic crisis, in the myasthenic crisis, you have to give the agent that is actually improving the muscle contraction. So, here you have to give the uh, cholinesterase inhibitors. 
while in cholinergic crisis if you give the cholinesterase inhibitor then the condition worsens so the treatment is exactly opposite in these two conditions but the symptoms are same so the differentiation is very very essential okay now yeah, if you just think like that uh, like this then you you may find that it is nearly impossible but there is a one agent and that is intravenous hydrophonium okay the hydrophonium hydrophonium it is a structure similar to that of the neostigmin but it is a weaker it is having a weaker action as compared to the neostigmin it is a cholinesterase inhibitor it is a reversible inhibitor and its biggest advantage is that it is having a very rapid onset of action and a very short duration of action and because of the very rapid onset very short duration that even if the patient is now what will happen first we think that if the patient is having myasthenic crisis and if you give intravenous hydrophonium 2 mg iv state then the condition of the patient improves and if the condition improves it means that the patient is having myasthenic crisis but if the person is having cholinergic crisis then the condition worsens but it is again not troublesome why because this effect will not last for more than 10 minutes okay so the intravenous hydrophonium 2 mg is the preferred drug or drug of choice because of its weak action, rapid onset and very short duration of action. Okay, so this is all about, here in the question, it has been asked that you have to write the answer of this and you have to justify your answer. Okay, so like this, so this is the answer of the, our first case. Like this, we will discuss the answer of each case as I have told you, at least two to three cases per week. Next time we will discuss this case that is a 66 years old man came to your clinic for the evaluation of the tremor on examination he took several small suffering steps before he could reach his full stride patient was diagnosed as having parkinson's disease and was prescribed combination of levodopa and carbidopa and the questions are explain pharmacological basis of using levodopa carbidopa combination in the given case and list the other pharmacological agents which can be used for the treatment of this condition and what are the side effects of levodopa carbidopa combination therapy we will meet soon thank you very much